Hi guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I want you all to just go ahead, anybody who's watching right now, if you're already on and paying attention, I'm checking off to the side on my computer to see if I am transmittalating. Let's just see what's going on over here. I have done a speed test on my computer, or my internet, I and I have good speed up and down. I have requested strongly of my husband to not do anything streaming on the TV. And I want everybody now to put your hands out and cross all your fingers, cross your toes, cross your legs, cross your eyes, that we have good internet all night long, okay? Hey, Barbara, hi, Kathy. Thank you for your special bundles order. I appreciate you very much. Hey, Robbie, how are you tonight? <clears throat> hi, Jean. We had more trouble getting you. Got me now. Okay. Well, hopefully it will work tonight. Hi, Karen. I'm I'm afraid if it doesn't, I'm going to have to call it good with Facebook and figure out how to do my lives direct from YouTube. And I don't really know how to do it. And I'm an old dog, and that's going to be a new trick. So let's just hope that this works. Hi, Sharon and Bill. And, uh, oh, I missed it. Sharon and Bill and Jean and somebody else is over there with you. Hey, Karen. Hi, Nan. Hi, Pam. Thank you for the Christmas card, Pam. Hi, Terry. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is a blatant case from my friend Don Olszewski, who did a wonderful presentation of her million-dollar stamp set when we were at On Stage. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stamp set. I love it. Um... I just, I can't even tell you how pretty it is. Look at all the little touches. The notes that are hearts, the treble clef that is a heart. Um, this, uh, shoot, what is, guitar neck is gorgeously drawn. The heart for the top of the grand piano. Um, the notes, it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful stamp set. And I was so glad to see it come. Um, and she really did a nice job designing it with the Stampin' Up! designers. She also showed... Hi, Mary. Uh, fa Facebook didn't make it easy. No, Facebook is not easy, is it, Karen? I'm... Uh, yeah. Anyway. But she showed this card that I am going to show you tonight. And she just demonstrated it and then put it up on the board. Um, and recently she let us all in on how to make this beautiful easel card. Look at how fun this is. That's sheet music that pops up and holds the easel in place. All right, and then of course there's a keyboard. Can you see that the black keys are raised with black Stampin' Dimensionals? Oh, by the way, hi Lainey. Um, and I did a little bit different than her. She made a black grand piano and I decided to go the cream color. Um, and this is my prototype that I made on her directions. I've, I've changed up a little bit for tonight, and so we're going to do it a little bit differently, uh, but not by much. So let's go ahead and get started. This is very, very easy. Hi, Marianne. How are you? Hi, Sue. Hi, Donna. Yes, this is a beautiful music stamp set. It, I mean, they just really, really nailed it. Um, and I'm also going to use a couple of the flower and leaf uh, dies in the new Garden Gateway dies, which is bundled with Grace's Garden. So this is a beautiful, a beautiful die set, and I'll play with it on its own sometime in the future. Okay, let's get started. Let us get started. So probably the most complicated part of this is cutting all of the keys and getting them all lined up on the keyboard. And even that isn't terribly difficult, okay? So... Don't, don't think this is a very difficult card. It starts with really what is essentially a basic easel card front. Okay, so this is four and a quarter, or I'm sorry, five and a half by eight and a half, and I have scored it at one and seven eighths and four and a quarter. Okay, so I'll fold it here. This is thick, very vanilla cardstock, by the way. Hi, Fran. Hi, Sue. There is no die set for this stamp set at all. This is a stamp set only, uh, Sue, which I think is way, it's really too bad. Wouldn't this have made some fun dies? Um, but it isn't, and so that's what we're going to 
have to deal with, and so that's how it is. Then I'm going to go ahead and fold the second fold at one and seven eighths. And you can see the easel starting to come to life. Okay, now the front, which is the uh, grand piano, is a five and a half by four four and a quarter inch wide. So it's the same exact size as the card front. And what we do is we take the largest oval die from the layering ovals die set, and we're going to cut out one of the corners. Oh goodness, I've got it sitting right here so I can show you. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Carol. Hi, Patricia. Merry Christmas to you as well. I've got it stuck on the on the table and I can't get it up. I can't get it up. Okay, there we go. So anyway, as I was attempting to say, but not doing a very good job, what we're gonna do is we're going to cut out this corner, the top right corner, okay? And I'm not gonna do it because it's not very difficult. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking this large oval die and you're putting it about an inch and three quarters. This edge is about an inch and three quarters from this corner and about two inches down on the card, okay? So when you cut it, what you end up with is essentially this, okay? You can see how that came out. Now, what what Dawn did, she cut straight across here, and I did that on my first one, and I liked it. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, but I decided to get a little bit, you know, jiggy with the instructions, and so when I trimmed the edge off, because you know when you do this, you're going to have like this little point right there, right? And I just trimmed it off, and so what I did is I trimmed it in kind of a, an easy little edge like the, like the top of a grand piano would be. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do just the same thing. I'm just going to barely trim it off right there like that. Just barely. Okay. You could probably on this one also, in fact, let's try that. What the heck? What's the worst that can happen here? It's paper, right? Let's try the corner on the uh, detailed trio punch. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So now we have a rounded grand piano. And pretty much this is just going to be adhered to the easel portion of the card. But before we do that, let's go ahead and run a little length of our ribbon. And this is the um, Petal Pink Metallic Edge Ribbon from the, um, oh, it's from the Parisian Suite. What is the name of it? Sorry. By the time this catalog goes away, it's from the Parisian Bloom Suite in the new catalog. All right. So really all I'm going to do is I'm going to just adhere this across with some glue dots one glue dot on that end. The only problem with making a cream colored <laughs> piano for me is that it's a cream colored piano and that's like a white t-shirt, which is just begging, just begging. If you have a die, you must use it. No straight cutting. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The only problem is, and I, and I did try this, you can't use that punch to really actually punch this because you can't get in there directly very well. So you kind of have to do that curve and this curve uh, with your scissors. But it's a little one, so it's it's really easy. But the uh, this outside corner, you certainly can. We just proved we just proved that we could do it with the uh, detailed trio. Are you guys all ready for Christmas? I hope you are. I've been seeing some folks saying that they were getting really done, and that I think that's awesome. I'm happy. I'm just about done. I have to make a few more boxes. I decided I was going to give all of my friends that are of the female persuasion, I, I got them some Mrs. Myers, uh, you know the Mrs. Myers stuff? 
See you, Marianne. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Have a very happy and Merry Christmas um, and be happy at work today. Um, so anyways, these Mr. Mrs. Myers, um, these things right here, I'm giving the women all of these and I made the uh, boxes to go with. So I'm making boxes like this, one for each of them. And then I was able to find some um, like, like Gojo, but hand sanitizer for the guys. And I adapted my box and made it just a little bit bigger for them. So I have a few more of those to knock out and then I will be ready to go. Okay, so just the length of the um, ribbon across the front with the glue dots in the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some, uh, well, no, first I need to do some stamping. Okay, now, I am a little embarrassed, you guys, because every single day of my life that I can remember growing up when I was in elementary school, we lived right next door to my grandmother, and in the morning when my mom and dad would go to work, they would carry us next door to my grandparents where we would finish sleeping, and then we'd get up and my grandmother would make us breakfast and get us ready and t send us off to school. Well, we both, my brother and I both had a piano lesson with my grandmother every morning. So I do play the piano, which was part of why I love this card so much. <laughs> but I was really embarrassed that when I stamped the keyboard, <laughs> do you see the problem? Do you see the problem? I'll just wait, see if anybody knows what the problem is. <laughs> uh, yeah, any second now it's going to come to you. It took me a minute. I had the card all made, took all my pictures, had the card all made. And yeah, the problem is... It's upside down. This, <laughs> the keys on a piano are not at the bottom of the keyboard. It's more like that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed and I'm going to try to do it correctly on this one because my grandmother is spinning in her grave right now. I'm quite certain of it. So I'm going to make sure I've got it right side up before I start stampulating. <laughs> And that is not right side up. There we go. Okay. So we'll get some ink. Now, here's how you want to do this. Here's where we have danger, danger close, people. This is where my, um, uh, this is where my piano is going to rest. So I want notes all the way across there. And so I'm going to let it overlap off of the edges a little bit so that we make sure we have good musical coverage all the way down. And I'm going to start a little bit off of the paper. And it's a nice photopolymer set, so you can really see it good if you can get over the top of it. There we go. Never rock your stamp set, people. Don't rock the stamp set. Well, you know what I meant to do there. You know what? I want this one to be right, so give me a half a second. I'm going to make another card base, okay? Just a second. Because that is annoying me. It's annoying. It's going to annoy me. I'm pretty sure it's going to annoy me. And I don't like to be annoyed. And that, it won't take a half a second. So let me try it. Let me do this right here. Okay. So remember one and seven eighths. And four and a quarter. There we go. All right. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's do it again. Okay. And then we'll go the other way. Okay. Let's try again. Let's do it again. Still right side up. Let's get the ink off. Okay. 
This is like my kryptonite, you guys. Tuxedo black, just kill me now because I am going to get black everywhere. See you, Lenny. Time to use a post-it note to mask off the bottom part. Well, actually, I'm going to go past the bottom a little bit because I want it, if, the, uh, if that happens to show, I want it to be covered in notes. Okay, let's try this again. Make sure I'm far enough over. Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, I'm going to be real quiet right now because I want this to be right. It's very important to me that this be right. Okay, everybody holding their breath, holding their mouth just right. Hey, at least it's right side up. My grandmother can can rest easy. Okay. Whew. That was very stressful. Okay. Whew. All right. Now, I think that that is all going to be covered, so we're good. Now I'm going to use, Now I'm going to do what I was trying to do a little bit before. No, you really don't want me to uh give you any lessons <laughs> no hey Cindy how are you okay so I'm gonna use liquid glue on this bottom part and you want to be a little generous as in pretty generous because it's gonna be flopping around and you don't want it to flop off because flopping around is fine flopping off is not okay so there we go and let's put our in on here and you're just going to line up the bottom get it on there straight and line up the bottom there we go and then I would I would turn it over to be sure it's lining up on the bottom because sometimes it's not okay now we'll just go ahead and leave that for a minute and it can get itself all glueified down. But you can see that it's starting to come together very nicely. Very, very, very nicely. Okay, set you aside. Now, let's make us a keyboard. Now, I am pretty certain it is not nearly this easy to make a real keyboard. I'm certain of it. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I did it like that. I can't believe it. Okay, so the keyboard is two and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then you cut a whole bunch of keys. And um, I made mine very vanilla because, you know, tickle the ivories. That's just me. So, you know, you could make them white if you wanted. My 300,000 million year old piano in my living room has definitely got yellow keys. So I didn't go with so saffron, although it was tempting. No, not really. But you know what I was thinking? You know what would be really cool? is if you've still got some of the uh, wood grain paper, this would, that would be cool as the card front for your piano. It could be a wooden piano, which I think would be kind of fun. But that's just me, and that's how I roll. Okay, so here's how you're going to do this. These little tiny pieces right here, you need 10 of them, and they are um, th half an inch. I wrote it on one of them. Where is it? Where are you? Where are you, legend? Where are you, legend? Where's the legend? I've had too much sugar. I'm going to have to go back on my diet in a big way right after Christmas. Oh, there it is. Okay, these are all half an inch by two inch, and you need ten of them. And then you've got little black keys, and we're going to talk about those in just a second. Okay, so here's what you're basically going to do. You're going to line these up across the keyboard. Well, actually, it's just a piece of black cardstock. Come on, man. It's not a keyboard. And I am going to use my tweezers because I like that. There you go. See, Carol, I think that would be a really cool piano. So what I do, and this was also Dawn's recommendation, is to go across, lay everything out so that you get the spacing correct. And I can tell you she did this math, and she did it well. Um, this is a good... It works out really perfect, and you can really just kind of eyeball the the um, the spacing 
it works out very well. She, this was higher level math, and I'm really glad she did it because it would have probably bamboo, bamboozled me pretty good. All right, I appear to be missing a key. I am missing a key. Oh, there you are, you little bugger, trying to hide from me. Can you even believe that? It is Christmas. This That key is getting coal in his stocking. Man, I am wound tighter than a tick. Yep, too much sugar. Too much sugar. But we had good soup for dinner, so that's good, right? Okay, so that's pretty much where it's going to be. So now what I did is I just picked up a key, pick up a key, put a little glue on the top, and put the key back. And repeat 10 times. Aren't you glad I didn't do this ahead of time so that you could watch this concrete try? Oh, you guys, while I am doing this, maybe I can do it and tell you. So tonight, just about dusk, like at five, right before it was really starting to kind of think about getting dark, um, I was looking out my back door and I saw we've got a mama and two, oh, I guess yearlings maybe. I call them younglings because I don't really know how old they are. But they're obviously not full adult deer. And they were on the other side of my pond. And the two babies, the babies were playing in the pond. And so they were trotting in the water <laughs> right on the bank so that they could play. And one of them was, he would stand there, or she would, and she's pawing like this. And you could tell when the water would splash her belly because she'd leap straight up in the air with all <laughs> I was just hee-hawing. Finn was not as amused. He thought that, that that malarkey needed to stop right away. But God, they were so cute. I guess it was just cool enough to make them feel good, but just warm enough that getting in the pond seemed like a good idea. But they just played and played, and Mom, you could just see her looking at them like, you stupid you silly people, I tell you. Babies, what are you going to do? But I got, it gave me a good chuckle. We've, we've got a lot of them back there right now. That's nice. They're cute. And they watch us in the morning and the evening. They're not very worried about us, which is actually bad. They should actually be more afraid of humans. Would be better for their longevity. Okay, and then I'll just put two more dots here. And and now I'm just getting ready to apologize straight up because I meant, before I came on, I meant, I planned, I had every intention of, and that's why you only put a little bit of glue because you need, if you need to adjust, you've still got a little time. Still got a little time. There we go. Okay, and that's not exactly perfect, but it's good. It's pretty good. Anyway, what I was going to do before you got here was I was going to build. No, Sue, I would absolutely tell them to not get in the pond in Florida. That would be bad. But I would maybe not live by a pond if I lived in Florida. Because best I can tell, according to lore, best I can tell, Every pond in Florida has an alligator in it. Every single one. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to come back and put a little dab of glue under each end of your keyboard. Each end of your keyboard, she says. Like it's an easy thing to do. It is easy when you're not on camera. See, that's my theory. Can you guys still hear me? I hope you can still hear me because I'm saying really important things. No, I'm not. But I want to be sure you can still hear me because last week was terribly frustrating. I'm not sure if it was more frustrating for you or for me. I was pretty frustrated. And I know you guys had to be frustrated as well. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just finishing the securing of the keys, the white keys. And then I'm gonna load my black keys with mini Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm using the black ones. Isn't it cool that those are carrying over? Yay! 
Don't particularly know why I need black ones, but I really like having black ones. Oh, good, Kathy, good. You're, I'm still here. That's awesome. You have three alligators? Oh, no. Mm -mm. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. All right, so each one of my little keys, and my keys are three-eighths of an inch wide by one and something long by one and a quarter long. So three eighths of an inch wide by one and a quarter long. Now, Dawn used her classic label punch, um, but I was not successful with that. I could not get it straight. I couldn't get them right. Just, I just couldn't do it. it. It boggled me, and so I just cut them. Just straight up cut them. So basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pop these keys on. In the classical piano order, which is two, three, two, and we're just going to line those up just like that. So let me go ahead and get the rest of my dimensionals on. And if I was a big video person, I would now edit this out and you wouldn't have to watch it, but sorry, I'm not a big video person, so I'm not editing it out. And so you have to watch it or you can go get a bowl of cereal if that is what will make you happier than watching me dimensionalize seven black keys. Karen, yes, this set is amazingly wonderful. And not for nothing, it is available in one of my special bundles. So you could get it as part of a special bundle where you could save yourself 10 to 15% and maybe a little more depending on how much tax is where you come from. Um, if you haven't checked out my special bundles, I would urge you to do it. Um, you'll get your celebration goodies. Every single bundle has a free gift with it. And it will save you money, I promise. Right, Kathy? Kathy Fennell just ordered, so that was good. I actually believe that this is in time for cookies. More sugar! Yes, my friend made Mexican wedding cookies, which I thought they are so good. And she made pecan meringues and she made homemade haystacks and she made homemade pecan rolls. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad for me. I'm just saying. All right. The, uh, music from my heart stamp is actually in my bundle number eight it's called the say it in ink bundle. And that's really heavy on sentiments. And so it's kind of a fun one. All right, so there goes black key number two. Uh, and then we're gonna skip, skip a key. And not a skipper key, that's a dog. This is completely different. And do three. We've been on our pond for about 15 months. We haven't seen a gator yet, but we have had a sandhill crane that's very close to the water. I hope it... I don't know if that's what that means or not. I hope so for the crane's sake, because he's maybe tasty. Do you suppose he tastes like chicken to an alligator? I don't know. The other day, speaking of cranes, these were actually herons, but there was a ton of them, like a whole freaking herd of them, circling over the top of our house. And if you've have you ever heard herons talk? They are um, they have the weirdest calls of any bird I've ever heard and they were just carrying on and circling and circling and I actually think well Wayne said this is what he thought and so I decided to go along with it that they are they were circling to reestablish a new leader because they were headed south I guess and I think probably you know the ones in front get tired because they're bucking the headwind and so I could just see him going, okay, it's your turn to lead. No, I don't want to lead. You lead. No, I don't want to lead. You lead. Because uh, that's exactly, and they were up there for like 15 minutes just circling overhead. All right, and there is our keyboard. And now all we're going to do is adhere him right here. Now, on the prototype, I put a little sneaky sentiment behind my sheet music. I'm not going to do that on this one, I don't think. So let's make our sheet music now before we put our keyboard on. For our sheet music, we have a piece of more very vanilla. And this one is two and three quarters by three. And what I did is I scored it 
at one and seven eighths down the short side, okay? And pretty much what this is gonna do is it's gonna bend under and we're gonna use this to adhere to the keyboard to create our sheet music, okay? So the reason I show you that is so that we know which side, and by we, I mean me, I will lose it completely. We know which side to stamp on because we wanna be able to see that side, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. And what I did, what I did here is, and this is so fun, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, so we've got um, our uh, frets and I'm just inking it up in tuxedo black and I'm gonna stand up so I can see that I'm maybe hopefully a little bit straight. Gotta hold my mouth just right, okay. Okay, and I'm going to shut that so that I don't get my big old arm in it. And then I'm going to take my uh, treble clef, the pretty one with the heart in the middle, and I am using cherry cobbler because that was the color I chose. And I'm just going to ink that up like so. And I'm going to wipe off my block because, you know, very vanilla cherry cobbler. Uh, it's doomed. And I'm going to stamp that right at the end of the fret. There, like so. Okay, now, here is something that is so cool, and Don showed us how to do this. All right, Karen, go eat your dinner. I hope you have a good one. You have a very, very, very Merry Christmas, and I will see you next week. Say hey to Jean and the rest of the family. Okay, so now I'm going to use the double, um, the eighth notes here and the 16th notes here, and we're going to actually sound out happy birthday to you with these notes. Watch this. And I totally stole this straight up from Dawn because this is what she did for her demo. All right, so we're going to stamp the first one. I'm going to get rid of that because that is just a, an accident looking for a spot. All right. Number one. Okay. And let me get another block for my eighth note here. Sometimes I decide to do dumb things like put too many stamps on one block and then I get myself in a in a block crack. <laughs> I had to do it. Okay, so then we're going to go up. Oh, happy birthday. To you. <laughs> Seriously now? Seriously. How cute is that? All right. Now I wanted to try one other thing. I think I could do that. I was See, I'm kind of experimentalating here a little bit. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it on the inside of my card like I did before. I'm going to put happy birthday there just because, just because. In case the people can't hum it out, I want them to know why they're getting a card. You see what I'm saying? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of figure where my keyboard's going to be. Like a that -a. And then I'm going to stamp the pretty happy birthday sentiment. Right about there. And closing cherry cobbler, right? Carol, it's so cool. Isn't it just so freaking cool? We just sat there at on stage, just our our jaws were dropped because how cool is this is this whole set? Right? It is just so freaking cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my sheet music and I'm gonna give that a good good go with some liquid glue, like that. And I'm gonna adhere it to 
the back of my keyboard, trying to get it at least a little bit centered, like that. All right. Okay, and then we're going to put some glue on the back here. And put this on the bottom of the card. Like that. Okay. And then when you lift it up, you have your. You have your Piana. You have your Piana, like a Vada. Now, let's go ahead and decorate the front of the Piana, and we'll be done. And you'll be glad to know that I did do some pre-cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take another piece of the Petal Pink ribbon and tie it around like this to create a faux bow. Fobo. That's different than FOMO, which is fear of missing out. FOBO is fear of bowing. Uh, I don't know. I got nothing. FOBO. It's F A U X. And we'll just snip some little doohickeys there. And then, remember, I told you we had used the Grace's Garden, the, uh, gar the Garden Gateway dies. And what I did is I cut some leaves like this with out of pear pizzazz and I also cut a cup a little flower with some cherry cobbler so that is uh, these two dies here these two dies here and these are the flowers that I cut for this card and we have stamp and dimensional covers everywhere just saying all right, so I'm going to probably snip off a little bit of each of the leaves because I don't want them to be quite so long. And we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the ends. Like so. And we're going to stick it like that. And then I'm going to put my flower on with a little more liquid glue. And we'll just stick it right there like that. Okay, now I'm going to put my sheet music up before I put my... There we go. Yeah. I'm not going to put another leaf. I don't, well, I might. Let me see. How would that leaf look? How would that leaf look if I stuck that leaf there? How would it look? What do you think? Leaf yes or leaf no? Second leaf yes or second leaf no? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Actually, I think if I were to pull it like that. Hmm. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to leave it well enough alone. There we go. I'm calling that done ya. Leaf yes? You think yes, Terry? Maybe a little bit shorter. Maybe it's too long. Let's try that. No, I don't like it. I'll leave it like that. I think it'll look better when it's up in its in its upright position, like so. Let us go ahead and just decorate us an envelope right quick. Because, you know, envelopes, you gotta have them. 
they don't mail without them. Just saying. And I'm going to use this gorgeous, I love this treble clef. I really, really love this treble clef. And I'm just going to put it on the front, in the bottom corner of my very vanilla envelope. Like so. Oops. That was graceful. That was so graceful. I got it. I mean, I got it. I got cherry cobbler everywhere. Yeah. Not on my card, fortunately. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, give me a half a second. I'll get it on my card. I can do this. I can get it on my card. And then on the flappa, I'm going to put my <laughs> keyboard uh, with the keys correctly orientated correctly orientated that's how they used to say it I bet they still do in so many places and there we go so there you have it one each thanks to Donald Shevsky for a wonderful 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 card this was so creative and so beautiful like I said when she showed this at on stage there was a collective gasp in the room we were all just blown away and she did hers with the black um, <clears throat> upright piano and she did a real red rose um, from lovely flowers I think and just a little leaf and it was just gorgeous but I decided to just change it up a little bit and go with the cream colored look and there we have it so I hope you've enjoyed it I really, really thank you for spending part of your last weekend before Christmas with me. I really, really thank Mr. Mark Zuckerberg for letting Facebook work for the entire time tonight. That is really, really awesome. All right, you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Kalinkimaka. Whatever is your season this season, I hope it is wonderful and that you really enjoy it. And we will see you next Saturday. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.